Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. Nowadays we might prefer to use the less religiously charged term common era, or we might not think at all about the reasons why we use the era that we do. But ultimately there's no way of getting away from the fact that this is an era that claims the birth of Jesus as its starting point. The era owes its origins to the calculations of a monk living in Rome in the 6th century called Dionysius Exiguus, but it was not adopted as a universal dating system at the time. In fact, it took centuries for it to come into general use. In the 8th century, the English monk the Venerable Bede adopted Dionysius's era for his history, which may have popularised it, but not enough for it to be commonly adopted. It was only from the later Middle Ages that the system began to be commonly adopted by states, and even then scholars were reluctant to use it for chronology because they saw deficiencies in Dionysius's scheme. Could the monk have got it wrong? Did the birth of Jesus occur at some other time? When Christian scholars of the 16th and 17th centuries endeavoured to create chronologies of the world, they were troubled by some of the evidence that was emerging. One piece of evidence that contradicted Dionysius's date for the Nativity was a coin. How could a coin provide evidence for the date of the Nativity? It wasn't even issued during the lifetime of Jesus. It was struck by Antipas, one of the sons of King Herod. This 17th century book about eras written by a cardinal provides an illustration of it. On the one side, we have a wreath containing an inscription in Greek. It gives the name and titles of the reigning emperor Caligula. We know that Caligula ruled from AD 37 to 41 on Dionysius' scheme. The other side has a palm branch and, in Greek, the name and titles of Antipas, the son of King Herod. Most importantly, it carries a date, written in Greek, year 43. This is a regnal year, so it must have been made in the 43rd year of Antipas's rule. So how does this affect the date of the Nativity? Well, if you accept as historical truth the account given in the Gospel of Matthew, then the birth of Jesus must have occurred when Herod was king. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. The story of King Herod trying to locate Jesus and the ensuing massacre of the innocents is an integral part of the nativity story. But the coin was issued much later, when Caligula was emperor, between 37 and 41, and it was issued after Antipas had been ruling for 43 years. So Antipas became king 43 years before the coin was made. If you subtract 43 from 37, you get minus 6. So Antipas must have become king between 6 and 2 BC on Dionysius's scheme. And that's the key to understanding why this evidence undermined Dionysius. Antipas only became ruler on the death of his father, King Herod. This means that Herod must have died 43 years before this coin was issued somewhere between 6 and 4 BC. Dionysius got his calculations wrong. In fact, we can do better than that, because historical sources tell us that Antipas was deposed by Caligula in AD 39. This means that Herod the Great must have died in 4 BC. So if we accept the account of the Gospel of Matthew as true, then this means that Jesus cannot have been born later than 4 BC. Some would argue that we don't have to take Matthew's nativity account as accurate. After all, the nativity story occurs in only two of the Gospels, Matthew and Luke, and there are differences between the two that are difficult to reconcile. 
Luke doesn't even mention Herod in conjunction with the birth of Jesus. Instead, he places the nativity at the time when Caesar Augustus decreed that all the world should be taxed. But this doesn't help Dionysus' scheme either, because the census that Luke is talking about took place in AD 6. It's no surprise that with contradictions like this, those 17th century historians decided to call it the Common Christian Era, implying that it was not so much an era shared in common, but an era that was commonly but mistakenly treated as beginning with the birth of Jesus. In the end, we have to conclude that the era that we use has no historical event as its starting point, and that its use derives from our very modern desire for a universal system of dating with which to anchor and synchronise events. It's simply an accident of history that we've ended up using the miscalculations of an obscure 6th century monk whose real aim was not to provide a universal dating system, but to help people calculate the date of Easter. Anno Domini by the common estimation. <laughs>